Let me just say a word about Donor Direct Action. For those of you who don't know us, uh, we were created to raise funds and visibility for frontline partners around the world. And we're just so lucky to have three of our partners with us. The Democratic Republic of Congo is one of the most dangerous countries in the world to be a female. But this brave woman who's sitting right next to me, who's Justine Maseka Bahamba, did I say it correctly? Is, um, is trying to change things from the ground up. She has faced death threats and abuse. Her staff has been attacked, but she's still standing and in fact doing more than ever. And I re remember when Donor Direct Action was literally just an idea and a dream. And I remember sitting with Jessica in her living room and thinking, is this possible? And how do we make this happen? And today I'm really proud to say that since the inception of the organization that $2 million has been raised for our partners around the world. C'est ainsi que en septembre 2017, nous avions organisé un forum au niveau national pour l'implication des femmes dans les négociations de paix et surtout la participation des femmes dans les négociations de paix, la prévention la prévention la participation des femmes dans la prévention des conflits et la protection des femmes pendant les conflits. Okay. So uh, in this context, Synergy uh, coordinating the Congolese Women's Forum last September, uh, the forum brought together 65 um, women activists from all parts of Congo and uh, the goal was to coordinate their action and, and also to uh, ensure that women um, have a plan of action to uh, really participate in the peace building process and, and, and the political process as well as conflict prevention. Notre plan pour l'avenir est que nous puissions avoir une participation massive des femmes dans la gestion de la chose publique. Puisqu'on dit souvent qu'une femme, une seule femme en politique, la politique la change, mais plusieurs femmes en politique, elles changent la politique. So, um, Justine's, um, goal and the Women's Congolese Forum's goal is really to uh, obtain a massive participation of women in the political and peace building process. And they, they always say, uh, one woman in politics, the politics gonna change her. But many women in politics, they're gonna change the politics. Uh, the story of Sohadik is one of many cases of women who have been killed under the pretext of honor killing. And uh, I think the strength of that case is that we consolidated our efforts as women's organizations under the forum to combat gender-based violence. And we wanted to say no of killing women for any reason. The right to life is a very important right. So we wanted to make sure that we don't let this case be covered by, by uh, legitimate, quote-unquote, uh, justifications of the society and the discriminatory legislation under which we're still living because our, the laws that are in force are still uh, the laws of uh, the Jordanians or the Egyptians and uh, under the previous rules and therefore they have not been changed. And these are very discriminatory. They go back to Lebanese laws and back to Napoleon Bonaparte. The penal laws need to be changed. The laws to protect women from gender-based violence need to be changed. We had to fight. But the individual case of Suhadik is very important because in that case, we wanted to observe all the, the courts. We stood before the courts. We said that stop killing women. And we joined our efforts to end that. And while we are not happy with the f final judgment, which was seven years and a half, we are happy because this is a precedent. Yes. Before that, I started off in the sex trade, not at such a very young age, but um, no, on that, I'll call it that fateful day, I had gone out job hunting, I think I was about 19, and I already had a child at this time. Uh, and um, so the, there was a man who stopped by me. Yeah. So he proposed, um, or, or he made an offer of business, which I did not understand at the time, but um, he later explained, I was hungry, I had no money, no hope of getting it anywhere, no job. I thought, um, who's going to find out in any case? And I came back and I was a couple of hundreds um, uh, richer. For the woman, for the ordinary woman in the street, it's not a matter of what law is in place, but of what services are there to assist this woman. And for me, the equality model 
um, sometimes known as the Nordic or Swedish law or the sex buyer law, is what ticks the most boxes. And so I approached Embrace Dignity and I said, this is what I wanted to do. And that was the formation of um, Kwanele when I asked um, Embrace Dignity to give me support to consult with women. And they supported me to, to consult with 30 women initially in Cape Town. And again, we did this exercise together and we all um, agreed that the equality model is what we wanted. But then because of lack of capacity amongst ourselves, we also need the assistance of an organization and Embrace Dignity has been doing that work very well. So that was my journey.